Hi everybody, Jane here, and if you're thinking it's been a long time since you've heard from me, you're not wrong. So pandemic world has been really rough. <laughs> um, basically two weeks before everything in the U.S. shut down, when it was still a China problem, um, I got promoted to a new job, and so my life has been really crazy. Um, I started, I switched from night shift to day shift. Um, then the pandemic happened and my kids went to Georgia to stay with their dad for the rest of the school year because I was still working in healthcare and didn't want to potentially bring anything home. Um, I do love my new job, but it has changed my life so much. And I'm going to have to make some changes to continue recording. And for a while, I thought I wouldn't. I thought, you know what? YouTube has been fun. It's been a nice hobby, but I think I'm going to give it up. But unfortunately, I really love YouTube, and I decided that I just couldn't give it up. So, what are some changes? Number one, I'm not going to be posting nearly as often as I was pre-pandemic world. Um, I'm not sure how often I'll be able to post. I will try to be consistent, but I would expect once a week is going to be the max. So you won't hear from me as much probably. That doesn't mean I don't have as much to say, but I don't have as much reading time as I did pre-pandemic world either. Another thing is, this is where I'm going to be recording. This is my bedroom. And as I'm sure you're aware, the lighting isn't great. I currently have two lights on me, <laughs> plus the light overhead and the bathroom light. And it's just very, very dark. And there's really nothing I can do about that. I have really dark walls. These are a very dark, like, yellow color. And it just sucks the light. The library I was recording at... Um, I can no longer do because of the hours that they are open versus my work schedule. And the other library that I sometimes were uh, recorded at has different hours because of the pandemic. So um, it's just not going to be feasible to travel there like I was before. And I'm going to have to be recording my videos in the mornings before I go into work instead of on my days off most of the time. So if you still are interested in hearing what I have to say despite the fact that it's not going to be as pretty, I really truly appreciate you. Alright, so let's get in to what I've been reading during the pandemic and I have to confess it ain't a lot. First, the two books that I don't physically have, I will flash them up on the screen. The first is a graphic novel called Spectacle. And it is about a girl whose twin sister is murdered. They are both working in the circus and she spends the graphic novel trying to figure out who killed her sister. Um, and her sister is a ghost kind of hanging out with her trying to help her solve the mystery, although her sister doesn't entirely remember what happened to her. I ended up giving that a 3 out of 5. It was fine. I loved the graphics. I thought the art was pretty. I loved that it was in color. Um, the story was okay. I love murder mysteries, so I was interested, and it was a cool setting, background to have in a murder mystery. I just was kind of lukewarm by the end of it. I just was like, okay. But again, please remember too, this is pandemic reading, so I'm not sure how much of that was mental health versus how much of that was it just wasn't quite for me. It was fine, but it wasn't anything I fell in love with. Um, and I will tell you that was a problem, especially during the early part of the pandemic. I think I didn't really read for about three months. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't mentally handle picking up a book. Um, I am back to reading, although 
much slower than I was before. The second book that I started reading and actually ended up DNFing was on my five books I thought I'd give a five star rating to. And it was the final Lemoncello book. So, I really love the Lemoncello series. It is about this boy and his friends who meet this guy who owns a library that he kind of turns into like a Wonka style library. There's lots of games. It's really unusual. It's not just focused on books, but there is like a book theme. The main character, Kyle, is not much of a reader, but he's a gamer. And I'm a gamer and a reader, so I really appreciate that. And he just goes into the library and does these different challenges that Mr. Lemoncello sets up. In the first book, they had they had this lock-in and they had to figure out, like they were in teams, they had to figure out how to get out of the library within a certain amount of time using clues that they were given from literature. And each of the books has a theme. The second book, the first book was a five for me, and the second book was a five for me as well, um, I believe, and it was themed around banned books. And I don't remember what the kids were doing, but I remember I had a good time. The third book was The Great Library Race, and that was the first one I didn't enjoy as much of the series. It was okay, not my favorite. This one, I just couldn't get into. And again, I do think that this was probably Pandemic World more than anything about the book. The book probably, had I continued it and finished it, would have been a three star. Uh, the focus on the last book was fiction, and there is a game in it. They're kind of doing some kind of living fiction game. It kind of reminded me, there used to be an old Nickelodeon show where kids were in video games, like the end, they're doing virtual reality stuff and picking stuff up and we can see them on the screen. I don't remember for the life of me what it's called, but it's probably showing my age. But that's kind of what the book reminded me of, and I just wasn't feeling it. All right, so there are a few more books I did read during the pandemic and when I started feeling more up to reading. There's four books that I read during the pandemic after I started reading again. Three of them are by the same author and one and are labeled nonfiction and one is a fiction. So let me go through the nonfictions first. I don't have a ton to say about them uh, other than I did enjoy them but some of them, some of the reading was more for work and writing prep than it was for fun. So I read Sylvia Brown, The Mystical Life of Jesus. And this was really interesting to me. I would give it, um, I'm going to say a three out of five. Uh, her style is very engaging. I definitely thought some of her ideas were really, really smart and interesting, and some of them were a little bit hokey. So this is her, Sylvia Brown's take as a psychic on the life of Jesus and where she views Jesus in her religious point of view. Um, and she's a, a Gnostic, a Gnostic Christian. And basically she believes that Christ was divine, but not so much that he did some of the things that he's said to have done. She makes some really interesting arguments about the contradictions in the Bible, particularly things in the New Testament that show up only one or two places or that show up as something in one place and something in another place. And I've always been very interested in religion and particularly trying to find a spiritual path since I left the religion of my childhood. So this was an interesting book to have somebody else point out some of the issues 
in the Bible and kind of what they think the answers are. Um, I do agree with some of the things she had to say. I know at one point I wrote a paper on the Gospels and it had to do, uh, this was for school, it had to do with the intentions of the different writers and the different books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and so why certain things and stories are in each book that maybe don't show up in other books. Um, one was to prove the, one was the teachings of Christ, one was to prove the divinity of Christ and that he was the Messiah based on prophecy, so that one's a little more like anything involved in the prophecy of the Messiah got pushed in that one. Um, one was more for the Jews, proving to the Jews he was the Messiah, and one was more for the Gentiles. So it's an interesting book. I didn't think anything that she said about the crucifixion made a lot of sense. So I really had a hard time with that. Um, and I think that was my biggest hang up about this book. She basically considers the crucifixion a really big conspiracy theory where he didn't really die and he just, you know, kind of was helped down off the cross pretending to be dead and ran off. And I just... <sighs> I'm not a conspiracy theory nut, and so I think that really, like, didn't work for me at all. So that really was the biggest thing in this book that I didn't, I didn't think was a good answer. Um, there are a lot of good answers for other things, but that particular one I didn't think there was. If you are, if you are spiritual and a biblical scholar and interested in, you know, kind of exploring why the different books of the Bible have different things and some of the stories that are one way versus another. This is an interesting book to pick up on the scholarly level. If you are really hardcore, the Bible is the absolute word of God, 100%, you know, then maybe this book will upset you and not be right for you. As I said, Sylvia claims to be a psychic and I don't, I don't know if she is, but it was definitely an interesting read and her take on the life of Jesus. The next two books were also Sylvia Brown's. I kind of wanted with the first one to read something I was interested in and see her style. I had seen it previously when I'd read a book she'd written about um, animals. and But that one ended up being less scholarly and more like chicken soup for the animal lover soul. So, I wanted to see, with reading The Mystical Life of Jesus, I kind of wanted to see one of her more serious books, less fluffy, something that she couldn't turn into a chicken soup for the soul book. The next two I am reading, I started reading actually, and her books in general, I'm about to write a book that has a character who is psychic. And I wanted to get a feel for how psychics perceive the world or at least how they believe they see the world. I don't know if Sylvia was really psychic. I believe she's dead now. So I don't know if she was really psychic or if she was a fraud. There's obviously lots of frauds out there. I like to believe that people could be psychic. I certainly don't want to be dismissive of that since I do write, you know, fiction that is fantastic. I want to believe in a lot of things. I want to believe they could be real even if I don't necessarily think they are. So, I read Insight, Case Files from the Psychic World. Now, I actually was kind of disappointed in this book. Um, I would give this one a really low three. There was nothing wrong with the book itself. It's just, it was kind of boring because most of it is her explaining an aspect of being psychic and then sharing letters from the people she's helped telling her how amazing she was and how accurate she was. So instead of really like a lot of this is how it is as a psychic, there is some of that, but there is a whole lot of, you know, oh, Sylvia predicted this and Sylvia predicted that and it was right on. And it just kind of felt like she was tooting her own horn a lot of this book. Um, it was kind of a similar problem that she had with the animal book that I felt was very chicken soupish is 
that one was largely letters from people about the amazing things their pets had done. And this was largely letters from people about the amazing things Sylvia had done. There is some really cool insight into how she perceives herself as a psychic and the things that she perceives in her world. But overall, I just, I got bored reading it. Um, though I did learn a lot that I can add to my book. And, you know, again, I think if you like hearing people's stories and you're not as interested in the nuts and bolts of things, this might be a really interesting book for you to read. Um, also, I was kind of, since it said case files, wondering if this was anything like that she'd done to help the police, and it's not. <laughs> it's all just her personal, like, you know, oh, I sometimes get feelings about people's health, like, and then a ton of stories from people who were like, oh, Sylvia, you saved me. You figured out that I had an iron deficiency and I needed to kind of push my doctor in the right direction. Um, so if you enjoy books that are more like that, that are more lettery and more not, not about, hey, this is being a psychic, you might really enjoy this. Um, if you were looking for something that was more insight into what it's like being a psychic, there is some of that, but it's definitely like hidden in the rest of the pages, in my opinion. The next one is also Sylvia, and it is Contacting Your Spirit Guide. This is a quick read. I think I read it like before a doctor's appointment and slightly after. It is a thin book and just kind of like this. This is where Sylvia talks about her spirit guide Francine and a little bit about spirit guides. And this one is nice because it doesn't have all the letters, it doesn't have all the other information. This is more of, this is my silver gu uh, spirit guide, this is what she does, this is how you contact yours. I will say, I've been trying the meditations in this book and I have not yet had success in contacting my spirit guide. Um, one of the challenges I have with meditation in general is I tend to fall asleep and that's been happening. So I get started on, you know, trying to do the meditations because she insists that everybody has a spirit guide and that if you use her meditations, and by the way, in this book, there is like a CD at the back that also um, is a walkthrough of the meditation. It's a disc, spirit guide, meditation. Like I said, I've been trying it. I haven't had any luck contacting my spirit guide, but a big part of that is probably that I tend to fall asleep anytime I try to meditate. Um, that has been an ongoing theme. I've, I'm interested in the spiritual, especially because I'm kind of in between religions right now. And I was raised conservative Mormon, um, not fundamentalist, but very, you know, conservative. I, as a teenager, became Wiccan, then I went back to Mormonism, and now I'm kind of struggling <laughs> without a religion, and it's just a little bit tricky sometimes. So, you know, the idea of contacting a spirit guide and talking to them and really trying to understand who I am, where I am in life, what's going on around me, the choices I should be making was very appealing, but I keep falling asleep. So if you're really into spirit guides, this could be a valuable book to read. If you're writing a character who is psychic, as I'm trying to, um, this is also, I would say, one of the more valuable books, understanding how she talks to her spirit guide and how that could be shown in a book, particularly that her spirit guide is not able to help her directly. Like he or she is not able to specifically say to Sylvia, hey, you're going to have this issue, you need to do this because it will mess up her charts. But she can give like information on other people because she's not their spirit guide. So again, it was okay. Um, I would give this one, I'm going to give this a four out of five. I feel like it was quick and to the point, which Sylvia doesn't typically do. So that was nice. Uh, it's cool that it has a CD in it. And it did what I wanted it to do, but it's it's also not like great literature. I'm not saying go out and get this and know your spirit guide. 
it was interesting. It was fine. It's not great literature. <laughs> to be fair, a lot of what I read isn't great literature, but... Alright, and the last one I read was the fiction, and it was called Pray for Us Sinners. And this is a mystery. And I will say it is a book in a series, but I've never read the rest of the series, and I probably won't. This book was interesting, it was fine, but it didn't make me want to go get any of the other books in the series. This is told in first person perspective, and it is about a guy who is dating this girl whose mother was murdered. And her murdered mother has kind of put a damper on their relationship. He's a single father, and he's really just trying to, like, figure out how to parent his teenage daughter alone. His wife has died. And to be with this girl who is, like, obsessed with the murder of her mother. He does a reasonably good job at parenting and helping her solve the mystery. But this ended up being just kind of slow. It is a lot of, you know... This is what I perceived as a child. I'm going to go run and get case notes. I think the thing for me is that we had met the murderer previously in the book, but I didn't feel like we knew them enough to really feel like at the end, like, oh yes, I could have, could have guessed that and they got their comeuppance. Like, I kind of had a feeling because of some of the stuff that he was the killer, but... I don't know. This book just, it was fine. It was a nice little mystery. It was the first book I read that helped me get out of the pandemic, um, the pandemic not reading thing. So that was great. But I think I would have liked it better if it was from the girl's perspective. Reading it from her boyfriend's perspective, who has some issues. He doesn't like being called her the boyfriend girlfriend. They're too old for that. And, you know, he really wants the relationship to move forward. And I feel like his investigating this girl's mom's murder is more about him and her relationship than it is about actually, like, helping her. He just wants her trauma moved past so that she'll get married to him and move in with him and they can move forward because he, he does love her. But I just, I felt like the book was too heavy on him and not enough on her. And since it's her mother who was murdered, she's kind of the more interesting character. But as I said, this is a book in a series, so I feel like the other books have probably been through his perspective, and and her mother's murder has been like the carrot that they dangle along, going, yes, you're going to continue reading and be interested in this book because you want to know what happens to her mom. So the fact that I read, the first book I read was, hey, this is what happened to her mom is probably one of the reasons I'm not really interested in continuing the series because, you know, I know the answer to that and stylistically and everything, there was nothing that dragged me into this book and made me want to hang out. Um, like, hang out with these characters again. As you guys know, I'm kind of picky about mysteries. A lot of mysteries feel like a three for me, and this was three out of five. Um, but if the characters are rich, I'll sometimes go back. And my very favorite mystery series have to have really fun, rich characters that I can relate to and that I enjoy hanging out with. Because the mysteries themselves, I enjoy the chase. I enjoy solving mysteries. I enjoy the mystery genre. But at the end of the day, it's the detectives and the characters that keep me reading or lose me. So these characters were fine. I just didn't feel particularly connected to them. I didn't feel like I wanted to continue their adventure. I don't care if they end up happily ever after now that her mom's murder is solved. Um, I also felt that the end was kind of... The end didn't really work for me. Not necessarily the... The reveal of who it was was fine, but some of the things that happened after the reveal were... just didn't quite work for me. They felt too contrived. So that has been what I've been reading in Pandemic World. Uh, I think I want to continue doing monthly wrap-ups, and you will see some videos coming out after this that I had recorded pre-pandemic. 
basically as soon as the pandemic hit, my world froze. My kids were gone for the rest of the school year with their dad. We did bring them back and they're doing their school year here with us now and they're doing it online. But being separated with my kids so indefinite from my kids so indefinitely and working in healthcare during this pandemic was just too much for me to do anything else mentally. So um, I have a lot of I have some videos, I guess not a lot, some videos from pre-pandemic that are also on here. Um, that I will be uploading in the near future. I am planning on getting back to making content and I appreciate anybody who does stay with me. I realize that this isn't perfect recording environment, but it's what I have and I hope that my message and the books that I read are enough that it's not going to be a huge issue that it doesn't look very pretty. Um, as always, I am Jane. I'm a writer. Um, my information is below if you'd like to check out any of my books. Uh, I have some on Kindle Unlimited, so if you're in the Kindle Unlimited program, you can read them for free. I don't currently have any free giveaways, but I do them frequently. Again, with my author business and everything, everything's just kind of stopped because of the pandemic. So I'm trying to pick that back up piece at a time. I will be letting you know if I do have any freebies or special offers in the near future. Um, and you're welcome to contact me on social media below. Please like and subscribe, and I will give you more content. Um, though, again, healthcare worker in pandemic world trying to school two children at home. Please give me some grace. All right, guys, this has been Jane. I'll see you next time. Bye.